You're welcome. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us for the ACRL STS Liaison um, Online Forum. We're really excited to hear from the liaisons that are here with us today. And uh, this forum will be for one hour. Um, I'm just going to start off with a couple informational items. Uh, we want to let you know that this forum is sponsored annually by the STS Liaisons Committee. And the goals of this committee are to uh, recruit and um, support and work with uh, liaisons from STS, um, or in some cases related to science and technology in some way, um, that are liaisons even to ALA or ACRL, we may be part of that process as well. But supporting liaisons um, between STS, um, ACRL, and uh, other organizations related to science and technology. Um, so you can see our committee website at this link. Um, and you'll be able to see here our charge, our current roster, and our roster for uh, the following year, um, upcoming. Um, and then from this same committee website, you'll also be able to see a list of our current liaisons. And at the top, um, a short little more description of the liaisons program. Generally speaking, if you're an STS liaison, um, what you would do is uh, communicate with the rest of STS and more broadly, if you would like to, um, to other areas of ACRL as well, about what um, you see as uh, key happenings in that organization. You might forward uh, calls for papers or presentations. You might let people know if there's a big a change or update such as um, the relationship between that, le that organization and uh, needs for libraries or related services like uh, data management practices, scholarly communication, instruction, that kind of thing. Um, and you'll see the names um, and terms of each liaison on this page. So you can go down and see who is the current liaison, who were past liaisons up to a certain point. And under each organization, um, you'll also see a link to reports. So if you'd like to take a look at reports um, from liaisons that are current or past reports uh, about that organization. You can learn about a little bit about a lot of organizations right here on this page. And I'm going to go back here and um, let's see, let's do this a little bit. Okay. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I also, last thing, I just want to let you know that we have a current call out for some liaison positions. Um, we've extended the deadline for this call to June 28th, so if you are interested, please let us know. The application is really simple. We'd just like to hear about your interest and any possible experience experience or involvement you've had with that um, organization in the past or that you foresee in the future. So we have had at least one application for the International Association of Aquatic and Marine Libraries and Information Centers, or IAMSLIC, but we have not yet had any applications for um, the Association for Information Science and Technology, ACIST, or for either of the special uh, sections of the Special Libraries Association. Um, so that's uh, DST and PAM, um, the Technology Division and the Physics, Astronomy and Math Division. Okay, and the second two, or the last two, I think you'll hear about today. So I'm now gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna hand this off to uh, Megan to introduce us to our panelists. And thank you to Megan Lafferty and Allison Ricker, two of our STS committee members who organized uh, this forum and to our presenters. All right, um, thank you, Jenny. And um, our first speaker today, um, uh, we're going to have, um, well, we have one person who had to drop out last minute unexpectedly, but um, we have um, four presentations today. It'll be about 10 minutes each. 
um, with some time for questions at the end um, for our, our presenters. Um, so our first presenter is Sandy Avila. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. I should have asked you about that. From University of Central Florida, um, who's going to be speaking about the American Physical Society. Are you ready, Sandy? I am, and you didn't butcher the name. That's just one way to say it, so you're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just looking for the share screen part. Okay. It's different now. Hmm. And it should be at the bottom of your screen now, Sandy. Invite participants chat record on this computer. Sorry, it looks totally different than the other way. Let's see if I open it up. There it is. Okay. All right. I don't know what you see. We see your slides. Okay, perfect, because I have like three monitors, so it's hard to tell where you might be <laughs> seeing, so perfect. Okay, so I am Sandy Avila. I am from the University of Central Florida, so this is just an opening slide letting you know who I am. I am the liaison to the American Physical Society. Here at UCF, I am um, liaison to seven different departments, um, the College of Optics and Photonics, physics, math, statistics, biology, chemistry, and nanoscience. Um, so the American Physical Society actually overlaps several of my liaison areas. So this was my first year attending their March meeting. Um, the meeting was um, on the 4th through the 8th, and it's usually held every year sometime in March, and then they have another big meeting in April. This year it was held in Boston. Next year, if anyone's interested in attending, which I would like to mention might be of interest to librarians, is um, in Denver, Colorado. Typically, just like most other um, conferences, it's a standard um, conference setting. And some of the things I, I take away and like to share with you all here is that there are no librarian focus sessions. And um, this is one thing that I think in some particular areas, we do see a librarian or kind of a teaching area as a focus within the industry conferences um, or subject specific conferences. But APS does not have any particular library focused um, session. Um, and this is something we might want to actually address and maybe perhaps um, involve librarians in the future to present maybe in the teaching um, section or focus, and I'll get to that in a second. So I have the uh, website here, but since I don't want to take too much time, I know we've got a lot of presenters, I put the website here to review. There are a lot of different meetings and um, particular regional area of focus in um, APS. So I listed the time um, and where the next meeting is going to be for March and April of next year. And there's something specific about these annual meetings. So March and April meetings are there kind of like our ALA or our ALA midwinter meetings, but there's also a regional focus and also an APS division focus. So depending on what area of the, of the country you have, you'll have an APS specific um, regional meeting. Those are much smaller and are typically in the same um, group of uh, states each year. And then you have different focus divisions depending on the area of content. So perhaps you're dealing with astronomy or you're dealing with um, undergraduate education and physics, introductory physics. So you'll have certain divisions that focus on this. The biggest thing that I noticed from the conference attending this year is that they have um, four focus areas, and I wrote them down here, education, undergraduate, careers, and industry. And as I mentioned, there's no librarian component, but definitely some of the careers and some of the education components did have places where I could see librarianship kind of um, intermixed and in that they would be able, you know, we would be able to present and be able to share some great content to help um, future physics um, professors and or um, graduate students kind of embed um, library content um, in, those, um, in those areas. We could, if we had time, go through the website, but like I said, I wanna make sure I give enough time to other presenters. If you have any questions or comments, I guess you can put them in the chat and I can, I can see if there's anything and I can answer them or we'll do that at the end, I'm not sure. So we things like- yeah, okay. So things to take note of um, that I thought were interesting and perhaps different than say our main conferences. They had a parents and children's quiet room. And this is something I noticed. I saw a lot of um, attendees with their children and um, all different ages. And I mean, you sometimes see that in library conferences or, or bigger conferences, but not to the extent that I saw um, at, at APS. So 
I thought that was really a, a nice um, thing. We had a lot of uh, attendees coming in from all over the world, lots of multiple languages going on. And it was just an interesting thing that they had a, spe a specific place for you to take your children and for you to intermix with them while you're going between sessions and that you saw a lot of children kind of walking around with, um, with their parents as, um, as presenters or and as attendees. So that's just something to take note of. I also thought it was really interesting how um, in this kind of conference you had more industry related partnering. So you had a lot of industry partners, companies, corporations talking to um, faculty, talking to future um, people looking for jobs and how there was a focus on sharing things from the field and how it's applicable to education and or um, kind of the collaboration between industry partners and educational um, institutions and in, in creating new content and relationships between how things are taught and how things are brought into the career um, sector. So I liked that and I think that's different than what we obviously have in our library um, conferences. And I loved how they actually had a Wikipedia edit-a-thon. They only did one during the conference, but something that you would normally see at a library conference, but that you're hoping that our um, academic partners are also doing. So the fact that there was an actual event hosted for about a three-hour period in the evening to sit down and actually edit um, different Wikipedia sites, I thought was a really cool, um, a really cool thing. Some of those uh, opportunities for our, you know, impacting um, APS and their annual meetings with our um, wonderful selves as librarians. I put down a couple comments here. First one is perhaps consider presenting at the April or um, March meetings coming up next year. And um, thank you, Jenny, for um, mentioning that we should, uh, as liaisons, talk about sending out calls for proposals on that and that kind of thing. So I might actually try to send out some collaborative um, calls for working with other librarians to, to go and present at APS next year. It'd be nice to kind of partner with educators and talk a little bit about the librarian's role in the classroom. So be looking out for that. Um, and in particular with the teaching section, because the teaching section is one of the focuses of APS and working with um, different faculty and different um, industry and institutional partners. Those teaching opportunities and sections are not just faculty teaching physics courses. They're actually other industry partners and people working within the institution, like say um, student success or career mentors. They are the ones also presenting at these conferences to share their kind of takeaways and um, you know, impacts to their, their particular institutions. What have they been able to um, improve at their, at their college or um, university based on APS, um, you know, future of physical society topics. The other thing was I actually ran into several of my faculty members at this conference and it's kind of interesting as you're flipping through the um, the roster and the calendars that you, you meet up with your faculty in a different city, maybe across the United States, and you don't see these people on your own campus when you're walking around. So making sure that you realize that when you go to these conferences, you can connect with your own um, your own liaison um, faculty members and actually create a new kind of conversation piece because they're kind of surprised to see a librarian at this conference and it kind of gives you a new in with them and a new kind of respect for the role that you play at your institution. So definitely connecting and using those opportunities to talk to grad students and or faculty from your institutions is it's really great. And I think that's it. So I put my information down in case anybody would be interested in putting together um, a future presentation. And I will definitely be sending out other information about APS and, and their calls for um, proposals in the future. So thank you for your time. I think this is, this is I think APS hasn't been on this uh, liaison call now for like five years to be able to present. So I'm glad we're able to kind of share a little bit about what they're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. Um, all right, so you will need to turn off your sharing. I'm guessing you're in the process of doing that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, our next presentation is from Todd Colgrove, who um, uh, is now at uh, Nevada State Library Archives and Public Records. and. Um, it's his presentation um, from the International Association of University Libraries, and I'm going to be presenting that uh, momentarily. Um, let's see. All right. I'm just. Okay. Let's get at this. Um, maybe not. All right. 
I'm just trying to figure this out, sorry. Okay. Okay, so can y'all see that now? Um, yep, we see the slides. Okay. Um, all right. Let's just do that. Okay. So, um, so this uh, report has a whole lot of pictures in it from the, um, the conference. Um, so let's see. So IATUL, um, the International Association of University Libraries, um, has the goal of providing a forum for the exchange of ideas relevant to librarianship in technological universities. Um, and their, their mission um, and vision uh, about um, kind of the art, overarching goals of, of these kind of universities. Um, let's see, I'm not going to read through the whole uh, mission and vision. Um, and so this is just a screenshot from um, their website and um, some information on joining IETUL. And let's see, uh, there, the name, the, the IETUL seems a little counterintuitive and uh, the name previously was the International Association of Technological University Libraries. So that's that's what the, the T comes from in the name of it. Um, so that's uh, where that comes from. So there are around 200 member libraries from 75 countries. You can see here, they're all over the world. Um, uh, so lots of different languages and cultures represented. Um, and their annual conference, um, Todd was able to attend and um, this is mostly reporting on that. Uh, so the conference was um, last June in Oslo, Norway, and it's many pictures from the conference. So um, just I I can't offer a lot of extra um, explanation to most of the pictures. <laughs> so, um, so libraries for the future, from inspiring spaces to open science. Um, they had receptions. Um, they, let's see. There's there's something about this uh, image is someone from Bavarian State Library in Munich talking about Germany's approach to license agreements with major SEM publishers on a publish and read basis. And he's got a link in there, which sounds like it might be. I know that that's something we've been talking about here at our institution. So that's something that that might be, are we sharing the slides for this later? So that's something that- um, Yes, we will. It's, people will have access to um, a link to, to that. Um, let's see, just, this is uh, just some of the things from the program, I guess a selection. I assume there was a lot more than this. Um, just some of the things happening during the meeting. So a five day conference, a rich program to encourage connections. So social events. Um, and hey, Megan, Megan, could you go back one slide? I, was, I, sure. I, I wanted to see, um, I didn't, I wasn't reading fast enough. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. The library based support structures for open science sounds, um, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is an organization that I honestly was not really aware of before. So <laughs> this is a lot new to me. Um, and so social events, which are always a good way to, to kind of connect with people at other institutions um, in a, I don't know, in a less formal way. Um, so they had, they, there was a reception that the mayor of Oslo held for <laughs> this conference. Um, and uh, Oslo City Hall, which is also where the Nobel Peace Prize is awarded. I am not paying attention to the time and I should do that. Um, let's see. And uh, I guess this is from Oslo City Hall. This is where, where Todd's uh, input would be very helpful. Um, just more events. And all right, upcoming things. Um, and the gala dinner at Oslo Met University. If that is offensive pronunciation to a Norwegian speaker, I 
don't know. Um, let's see. Just a lot of, this, there are a lot of slides here, but mostly pictures um, from the events. Day three, study, tour program, there are field trips, um, artwork, um, sculpture park, and sightseeing, a fjord cruise. Okay. Um, so, let's see, Viking ships. This is a very popular thing in Minnesota as well, Viking ships. Um, let's see here. Um, and so, any questions? And so, I think we'll leave those to the end, although I think also if, if you have like more in, intensive questions or more like in depth questions, you're probably going to want to go directly to Todd. <laughs> So um, this is a very abbreviated version, probably, of, of what he would have done. So, um, all right. Well, the very, the very first couple of slides, Megan, um, mm -hmm. the very first couple of slides, I was interested in the fact that it's actually an association of libraries. I, I know yeah. you've done that before. And you join at the institutional level, and then yeah. in that library has the ability to, to do any kind of membership activities. Yeah, that just, is very interesting. Yeah. I think maybe like slide four or five where it described that. I think, yeah, that sounds, yes, yes, here. Um, can you, can, is this visible? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is something that I wasn't really aware of either. So that is. Um, and being at a small college, it's probably why I've, I've never paid <laughs> any attention to it. Yeah, that that could be. Seems, although I'm at a, like a, a large. Really great yeah. So um, at at the time when Todd was um, went to this meeting, he was at was at University of Nevada Reno or uh, Las Vegas. We had multiple people from Nevada universities, and I, I'm a little I'm not sure who was where. So um, it was one of the Nevada universities. Nevada okay. University of Reno. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. So, um, hold on a second. Where are we? Okay. Um, so our next presenter um, is and is going to be uh, Chrissy. I I'm a little unsure how to say your last name. I'm, I apologize for not checking in earlier about this. Chrissy Clinky. Yeah. Good job. Oh. Okay. From University of Nevada, Reno who's going to be talking about two groups, um, the Geoscience Information Society and the Special Libraries Association, um, Physics, Astronomy, and Math um, section or division. Um, so I, you should be able to go ahead and share the little green share button down at the bottom since I've stopped sharing. Um, Can you guys see it? Yep. Okay, good. Um, my name is Chrissy Klinke. I am the Earth Sciences GIS and Map Librarian at the University of Nevada, Reno, De La Mer Science and Engineering Library. Um, I am reporting on two um, areas. Uh, the first one is SLA's PAM division. Um, which is, uh, it's the Special Libraries Association um, if you guys haven't ever been to SLA before, it's a nonprofit global organization for innovative information professionals and their strategic partners. Um, SLA serves more than 9,000 members in 75 countries in the information profession, including corporate, academic, and government information specialists. Um, so the PAM division is dedicated to library professionals who are subject specialists or liaisons to the physics, astronomy, and math divisions at their institutions. Um, the funny, I, I thought this was really cute. They call their group the PAMILY, um, which is P-A-M-I-L-Y. Um, and uh, as some of you guys are probably wondering why is a earth sciences librarian in the PAM division, um, well, I, I actually, Todd Colgrove was my old, um, was my uh, previous director, and he actually supported those departments. And working in a small library, uh, we t tend to informally uh, support each other's uh, 
uh, departments as well. So um, he asked if I would uh, if if I would fill in for him. So I said okay. Um, so when I went to the the conference, I told them that I felt like an imposter because I wasn't formally a liaison to the PAM departments at my department or in my university. However, everyone made me feel really welcome and I definitely felt a part of the family. Um, let's see. So one of the highlights uh, is that I, at the uh, SLA conference was um, the opening session keynote speaker, Carla Hayden, who is the US uh, Librarian of Congress. Um, it was really awesome to hear her speak. Uh, she, her, her, her speech was very um, inspirational. Um, one of the other really cool things about, SL, or what, about the PAM division is that they have this uh, PAM buddy program so it's basically um, a, a program for new new people in 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 the PAM division. You would get a conference mentor, and my conference mentor was um, Anya Bertel, Bertelman. I think her name was. She's a physics librarian for the uh, at Princeton University. And it was just really great to have a mentor and she made sure that I knew about um, the specific events. And also one of the really neat things about um, this division is that they have, uh, they have this thing called the Pam Sweet Daily Retreat and it's actually sponsored by the OIP Publishing Division. And they have like a continental breakfast and snacks and lunch throughout every day of the conference. And um, it was really neat because, of course, you know, we heard a little bit about the, about the company, but it was also an informal discussion uh, during each breakfast and lunch and, you know, if there was other people around for snacks. Um, let's see. They also had uh, some really great activities for the whole group. They did a first night and a last night's um, dinner. Um, they also did a tour of Camden Fields and they attended one of the baseball games. Um, let's see. Um, one of the other things that I thought was really neat was that they did this thing called the Pam dance card and the Pam dance card actually has all of the really, the really specific presentations, poster sessions, round tables of, uh, that, that, that are in the areas of the science, astronomy and mathematics division. Um, this really made it easy to navigate such a large conference. Um, and you know, you were, it, it really kept you on schedule, which was really nice. Um, because you know, the, uh, these, the, these larger conferences can be, um, a little overwhelming sometimes. So it was really nice to have, uh, to have this as a guideline. Um, so the next conference is actually happening right now. Um, that's why I couldn't present last year because I was actually at the SLA. Um, they kind of follow the lead with ACRL as far as the presentations that I've known or, or that I've, or not presentations, the conferences that I've been to, um, SLA follows ACRL. So they are in Cleveland right now hosting their um, annual uh, presentation. Um, I did get another dance card from Pam this year, um, but I didn't put it on the slide. I do have it on my report um, if anyone wants to see it. I think this is a like I said, I think the, the dance cards are, are, are really fun and they kind of just, they, they make it really specific towards those disciplines and um, like I said, just easy to navigate. Uh, let's see, where is that? The last thing I have is, um, oops, uh, they are currently looking for, uh, so SLA's PAM division is currently looking for um, the public relations committee members to help promote, uh, to promote PAM across um, other, not only SLA, but other conferences as well. Um, unfortunately, as I mentioned, I'm a nurse sciences librarian, so I will not be continuing on as the PAM uh, liaison, but I highly recommend this group uh, if anyone's interested. They are really awesome, and it's it was actually one of the best conference experiences that I that I've ever had. So in the six years of being a librarian, so um, 
There's that. Now the second one is going to be pretty uh, quick. Uh, it's the, I'm also the liaison to the GSIS, which is Geosciences Information Society. Um, this society facilitates the exchange of information in the geosciences through cooperation among scientists, librarians, editors, cartographers, educators, and information professionals. Um, the GI GSIS is a member society of the American Geosciences Institute, AGI, and an associated society of the Geologic Geological Society of America, also known as GSA. Um, so the 2018 annual conference, I was unable to attend um, th last year. Um, it was in uh, November. Um, the conference was in, in India, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, however, their website provides a ton of information on the previous um, conference. Um, uh, some of the really cool things I'd like to highlight is um, uh, the Geosciences Librarianship 101 presentations. Um, on my report, I have a link to all of the presentations that they have in the schedule. Um, some of the presentations included Intro to Geosciences, Scholarly Communications, State Geological Surveys, Collection Development, Geospatial Information, Technological Libraries. There's also GSIS map session handouts, map sources, which is like how to read maps and uh, mapping data. Um, also in my report, the December newsletter has a lot of information on the, uh, on the 2018 annual conference, including the president's column, 2018 top trends in geosciences or geoscience education. Uh, the vice president's column report from GSIS annual meeting. Um, and also they have this uh, area called the musings. One in particular was the Jupiter Notebooks, Earth Science and Libraries, What's Happening at UC Berkeley. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Um, so the next annual com conference uh, is in conjunction with the GSA conference uh, annual meeting. It will be September 22nd through the 25th in 2019, or this year I should say, in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, there is a call for uh, abstracts and submissions right now. Deadline is June 25th. And the, um, the area that the librarians specifically can submit their abstracts is for um, the technical session 176, which is tell us about Tell us what is new in your library, information center, company, organization, research institution, and university. I did include a link to the GA, GSA uh, website, um, but I also have it on my um, report as well. Um, all right, that should be it. I think I have as far as the report for that one, but I will be attending this year, so I'll have uh, a, a different kind of report for next year. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Yeah. Um, and our um, final speaker today is um, Amy Skorakis. I apologize for murdering your name if I have no, done no so. No apology needed. That's very close. <laughs> um, and so Amy is at the University of Pittsburgh and um, is our liaison for the March for Science and is going to be talking about what's going on with that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try and share my screen here. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see my slides. Yes. Okay. Uh, as um, you just heard, I am currently the ACRL liaison to the March for Science. Um, this was supposed to be my final year. I did agree to stay on a bit longer, though I'm not quite sure what my direct role is going to be, and we'll talk about that a little uh, later through my slides. Let me just explain a bit what I have done so far um, and who March for Science is if you're not familiar with them. Um, the March for Science is a, is, a, is a group that champions, as you can see here, robustly funded and publicly communicated science. Um, it's very in line in what we as librarians promote, free access to science, timely access to science, um, and equity in science. 
So I thought it was a good match for us. Um, and they did have last year in July in 2018, their inaugural summit, what they called it, was their, uh, which I was assuming was going to be annual, but there was not one this year. Um, I was able to attend the inaugural science summit, which is, as you can see on this slide, brought together um, 300 established and emerging leaders from scientific community, uh, adv advocates, uh, and education um, and it was a weekend long summit where there was a lot of breakout sessions working roundtables seminars um, and a, most of it was recorded um, so if you're interested in any of the sessions um, there is the uh, link there and the, the sessions were recorded hey Amy uh-huh uh, could you enter presentation mode so that the uh, printing is a little easier oh sorry about that let's see I haven't done this in a while the top, top left. Top left. Oh, there I am. Okay, better. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so, um, as I said, this was the inaugural summit. I attended uh, lots of sessions, but the two that I found most helpful uh, was the one session on alternative facts and fake news and how to advocate for science when data aren't enough. And um, it was basically a, a a lesson in communication um, for people that maybe have denied uh, certain sci proven scientific facts, things like that. So when you run into to some instances where it's it's hard to just present facts and get people to kind of, if not agree with you, but see your side. So that if, if you can go back and watch that one, that was a good one. Uh, the, one of the other ones that stuck out for me was called Breaking Barriers, and it was firsthand accounts of interdisciplinary initiatives and science in action. And that, that went into how you would um, partner with, with people that aren't necessarily scientists or in the scientific field uh, to work on projects and things like that. So that was also uh, very helpful. So in addition to attending the actual science summit, there was something that ran concurrently with the science summit, and that was the student advocacy summit. And their summit was entitled Building Coalitions with local and national groups. And I was asked um, by the, the, the director at the time of March for Science to be on a panel with her that dealt with building coalitions with local and national groups. So um, on this panel, a couple of things that I highlighted from my work were um, here at the University of Pittsburgh, we had a letter writing campaign to senators uh, to encourage their support of FASTER, which is the Fair Access to Science and Research Technology Act. And what this act basically would have done would, is, would have um, sort of closed the window on um, the time th certain things are embargoed, especially if it was uh, funded by uh, national uh, governmental funds. So that was something we felt that was important to us. We had a big letter writing campaign on that. Uh, the other thing that I participated in that I highlighted um, was our March for Science here on the University of Pittsburgh campus. Um, we do have a local March for Science group. And so I reached out to them and they, they had a big um, march here right on the, the university campus. Okay. Um, there was, as I mentioned before, there was not or there is not going to be a 2019 summit. So it's at this point where I, I, I kind of question our liaison role if they're not going to have something that I'm to attend annually. And so some of the things that I've talked about, the current director I work with, let me just say that, has since left. So I'm now in, in uh, contact with um, somebody that's in charge of their partnerships and some of the things that we've talked about moving forward. And of course, this will be open to the group. And if anybody else has any ideas on the best way to partner with the March for Science, I'd be open to that. Um, but even though they didn't have the summit this year, they did have a, a, what they called their um, day of action, which was March 4th, 2019. And basically all that entailed was um, marches Held, all held on that day globally and there was a, there was a lot held across the world what they considered their flagship march was held in new york city there was not a march in dc this year they are kind of reworking um their support system in dc so they said that their flagship was going to be in new york city this year but uh, some of the things that I see us uh, maybe being able to work on in the future with them is they're very open to co-developing programs with us. Now, I believe that can be as, as a whole or as if you want to, as individual institutions, work with me and we can work with them on co-developing programs. Um, and they also are into joint promotion of programs. If we're doing something in the name of science, they would like to know about it and they would put it on their blog, that sort of thing. Uh, they also have a... Um, 
a number of advocacy toolkits. One of the current ones is vaccine advocacy. So if that's something that one of your units is interested in, that's, that's available to us. They also have a federal science agency database, which they keep updated, um, which basically lists agencies that would be of use uh, of interest to particular um, topics within science. And so that's something that we also have access to. And then they have graphics too that are, that are fun for promotion of materials, their March for Science graphics, their posters and things can be downloaded. And that, that's just what a uh, picture of me and the, the former director for March for Science at our, um, at our uh, panel discussion. So that's just basically what was going on in the past year. As I said, I am open to um, continuing on as the liaison, however, I'm not quite sure how they're going to move forward. And at this point, they really don't have any concrete plan to have another summit, although that was a very interesting experience. And it was, um, it, it worked because it did pull a bunch of us together, scientists, educators, librarians, students that would normally not all uh, interact at the same uh, meeting. So that, that was interesting. So I'm gonna stop there. And so we have some time for questions. Oops. Hey. There. Um, thank you very much, Amy. Um, and I see from our chat that um, Chris had to leave early. Um, so, um, and of course, Todd, uh, Todd also was not able to be here today. So, um, but if, uh, are there questions for Sandy or Amy that they can answer right now while we're still together? Um, um, this is Allison, and I, I was at the SLA PAM session today at their annual meeting, um, and I, I just wanted to add a little bit about what they did. It seems like a really fantastic group. Um, there was a, a speaker there from NASA, and kind of piggybacking on what Amy just said about uh, March for Science posters. NASA has many posters that depict engineers and other STEM professionals in different cultures, different races um, that you can request. And, and there was a lot of discussion about being able to speak to people um, within their culture in order to make people feel that there's a role for them in STEM, but also a role for people across every discipline. You know, they need artists and photographers and writers and editors and graphic specialists and musicians to do everything that NASA does to bring science to the general public. Um, and that was very exciting to hear. So even if you, if you have students who are interested in supporting science, but they don't want to do science themselves, there are ways that they can be involved in a lot of organizations that, that need people with good communication skills, for example. And you don't have to be a scientist in order to communicate science. So, and the other speaker was from Case Western Reserve University, and he had a fantastic um, novel way of teaching his classes that um, if you have the opportunity to look at those talks, I think you'd get something out of them um, on the SLA website. Okay, thank you, Allison. Um, I see that um, Fred Stoss has uh, commented that um, he was past chair of the Atmospheric Science Librarians International um, and wondered whether um, STS and ASLI might collaborate. And so that's something our group can discuss later um, after this. I, this is probably not the right place for it, um, but that's um, thanks for that suggestion. Um, other comments or questions related to today's presentations? Thanks, Dave. Um, so um, with Fred's question about this other organization, Jenny, is that something that that you could follow up? Yes. With? 
about? Yes, okay, so, uh, Jenny, Jenny will be following up. Okay, uh, Fred, I saw, I see your um, email and I'll add a note in the chat too. And I noticed that Fred also talked about um, his liaison with AIBS and that he has, you know, he, he's been an advocate for uh, science and, and joins with AIBS. They're going to have a March Congressional Office Day, which I think is great. I think the more that we can be visible as librarians advocating for science and legislation that is backed up based on scientific evidence is all to the good. Mm -hmm. Well, before we uh, sign off and while anybody else thinks of any other final comments or questions, I just want to encourage um, any of our participants who are considering uh, answering the call for liaisons. Um, hopefully this gave you an idea of what liaisons do. Um, one other point I can make is that if it's for a non-librarian uh, organization, so that would be um, out of, out of our current call, uh, wow, I have to take a look at what our current call is. Um, <laughs> let me see. Uh, we may it not. It doesn't uh, look like there are any right now. Yeah, actually, I think those yeah. are all. Okay, yeah. So, but, um, yeah, if you are interested, hopefully this gave you an idea of what that's like. And, and just if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to the current liaison or to committee members who are out here on the call. Any last questions or thoughts? Okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone who attended today. Um, so we'll be sending something out about this um, with the recording and slides and things like that. So um, be looking for that on the STS list uh, in the near future. Um, anything else, um, Ms. Jenny or uh, Allison? Yeah. I'll add, yeah um, if you're going to ALA annual. There is a time when the STS Liaisons Committee meets. Um, that it will be during the all committee members or all committee meetings time for STS, and that's on Saturday morning. So I encourage you, if you'd like to know more about the committee or being liaison, come to that meeting Saturday morning. I will be there. Um, other liaisons might be there too. A good reminder. You're fast, Jenny. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I guess we're done for this liaison online forum. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.